two years ago, during the third session of the United Nations General Assembly, His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta made a commitment to the world to convene the just concluded Global Sustainable Blue Economy Conference, and this commitment has come to pass. In the last three days, In the last three days, the world has converged in Nairobi. More than 17,000 of us have all been part of a stimulating and informative engagement on the global sustainable blue economy. Earlier this afternoon, we held useful discussions and exchange of views on the potential and important role of the blue economy. At the leaders' circle, we reiterated some of the key issues contained in the Nairobi Statement of Intent on Advancing Global Sustainable Blue Economy. The Statement of Intent represents key political messages out of this conference. We can only hope that it will serve as a basis and reference point not only for the work of this conference, but also for future engagements discourse and activities related to the blue economy. During the leader's circle, my colleague, Honorable Jonathan Wickelson, the Minister of Fisheries, Oceans, and the Canadian Coast Guard, highlighted the following points as contained in the statement of intent focusing on needed action in eight key areas. One, the need to promote action-oriented global strategies that place people and the blue economy resources at the center of sustainable development as a contribution to the realization of the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the SDGs. Second, the need to promote collaboration for sustainable partnerships and projects in the various sectors of the blue economy for economic growth, poverty alleviation, and conservation of the resources of the present and future generations. Three, the need to mobilize resources such as finance from public and private sources, access to technologies and innovations, as well as capacity building among local, national, and international stakeholders for the full realization of the potential of the blue economy. Four, the need to promote the role of women in the blue economy and identifying the barriers and opportunities to further empower women and encourage their role in positions of leadership. This intent stems from recognizing that gender equality and the empowerment of women will build a more peaceful, more inclusive, and more prosperous world. Five, the need to strengthen science and research to generate and disseminate evidence-based knowledge and information on advancing sustainable blue economy. Six, the need to strengthen science policy interface of the blue economy resources to inform decision making. Seven, the need to strengthen governance mechanism for a sustainable blue economy, including by raising awareness and ensuring stakeholder participation in policy and decision making. Eight, the need to promote sharing of innovations sharing of technologies and best practices and experiences within and across regions. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is now my pleasure to request this conference to take note of the final document entitled the Nairobi Statement of Intent on Advancing Global Sustainable Blue Economy, which encompasses the vision and the intent of all governments here and stakeholders, including the business community and the private sector, the scientific and research community, the civil society and international partners to be used as a reference point for future action and collaboration on the blue economy. <laughs> Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I now wish to thank you all for your active participation. In fact, the complaint we had was about how people could not get to various places they wanted to be at the same time. 
The Ministry of Foreign Affairs is very proud to have chaired and executed the preparations of the Global Sustainable Blue Economy Conference. And we are sincerely grateful to our local and international partners for their material support and collaboration. <laughs>